as commitments go, few come bigger than this. Giving up a comfortable life in this country, for one, giving 24-hour care to hundreds of endangered animals in the African rainforest. But it's a choice Rachel Hogan didn't see as a sacrifice, only a privilege. It was made possible with the help of Bristol Zoo, which on Monday will celebrate its 175th anniversary. In the latest of his special reports from Cameroon, Richard Payne met the woman at the forefront of the fight to save the primates threatened with extinction from their natural habitat. From the West Country to West Africa, I've come to find out what's being done to save some of the world's most threatened creatures, the primates in peril. She intended to stay for just three months. Ten years on, Rachel Hogan is still transfixed by the animals she's dedicated her life to. What began as volunteering to dig trenches has become the top job at Mefu Primate Sanctuary in Cameroon, overall responsibility for the care of these victims of the bushmeat trade. I never had it in my head that I would even get anywhere near a gorilla or a chimpanzee. So it was a big surprise when I did, and I didn't think I'd then end up with two and then another one and then another one. Um, so it has been a, a privilege. <laughs> What started as 20 chimps and six gorillas has grown in a decade to more than 300 primates whose relatives have been killed by poachers for their meat. Rachel has a unique bond with them all. None more so than Khan Daniel, a Westland lowland gorilla, who she hand-reared for two and a half years. Well, I was hand-rearing him, so he was so little, so it was intense. So he was on me all the time, and that was 24-7. And just like a human baby, he needed to be fed throughout the night. <laughs> when he first arrived, the director at the time thought, you know, he's not going to leave, because he, he arrived with pneumonia. He'd been kept in a village for a number of days as well. So for the first five months of his life, he was really poorly. And there was two or three times where we nearly lost him. But now to see him where he doesn't need any humans and he's there with his group, that's the, that's the best thing. Did you have to think twice about the dedication? Because it's a huge commitment, isn't it? You've sacrificed your life for these animals. Yeah. You're right, you don't take it lightly, but you know, if, you, if this is something you're passionate about, and then you don't give it a second thought because it's whatever they need, so you do whatever they need and do the best for them, really. The respect is mutual. Watch what happens when one of the pack thinks our cameras are getting a little too close. So, number three, how many... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Tell me that's not gorilla poo. No, it's done. <laughs> so we've just come under attack. Why do they throw that? Well, this is their area, so he's just letting you know that you've come into his area and... He's the boss at the moment. Stay back. Yes. Yeah. Giving you a warning. I'm up and about by six, and normally I'll try and go and do an enclosure check, and then the guys start work at quarter to seven. This 35-year-old, once a factory worker in the UK, is one of the few women here to command an audience with the Cameroonian government. They've done more to tighten illegal hunting, but it's still a huge trade, which threatens many breeds with extinction. Shufai arrived both physically and emotionally traumatised, with horrific gunshot wounds to the arm and the side of his head. For every infant, you can estimate between five and ten members of that family group have been killed. The reason the infant is kept alive is because it's too small to be sold for meat, so then you have the, the problem of the pet trade. So then the, the infant falls into the pet trade, and that's where we step in and we try and rescue. Because of his psychological state, he wouldn't allow any close contact. So to gain his trust, Rachel sat outside his cage for more than two weeks. It, it still shocks me, even when we, you know, when we get an orphan, and they've all, they're all individuals, they've all got really horrific stories behind them. And I think the day that it doesn't touch me is the day that maybe I need to, to go back, because that's the drive that keeps you, you, you going, is to do the best for them. Bristol Zoo's money and world-leading expertise, vets, keepers, even technicians are regulars here, 
help Rachel and her team to cope with the growing demands they face. Bristol Zoo have, have been with us from day one, um, so they were, even before me, they were there very much in the early stages and have given a lot of technical advice. Because as a sanctuary, we don't get to pick and choose and we haven't got the availability that zoos in Europe have. Talk to Rachel Hogan, talk to anyone who works here, whether European or African, and they'll all tell you their greatest dream is for there to be no need for this place. But while the hunting and killing of primates continues, then so will this sanctuary. That is the best sound in the whole world. Now a world away from her Birmingham roots, this quiet compound in the Congo Basin is what Rachel calls her second home, with no plans to return to her first. The longer I stay out here, the more I miss my family, but it's not enough for me to leave this place. While this problem is still ongoing, I can't ever imagine turning my back on that. So if that means that I'm out here for another 10 years, another 20 years, then that's where I'll be. That series has been a real mm. eye-opener. When you think of our zoos in Paynton and in Bristol, you don't often think of the conservation work that they're doing, and that has been a real insight yeah, into it. Yeah, beautifully shot as well. Our cameraman, Matt Mulcrone, did that with Richard Payne. He must get a mention too. It's been yeah. really great. If you want to watch all four reports from Camera Room, they are online now. We've also uploaded some behind-the-scenes footage of our trip to Africa. You'll find it all at itv.com slash westcountry. Do give it a look.